let's start with the demonstration assume this pen to be a shaft so it's got a front and a back let's apply some torque at the front and an equal amount of torque but in the anti clock positions at the back so what would you call this scenario what would you call this scenario well this is the perfect case of twisting and whenever there is twisting in a shaft there are shear stresses induced at any cross section let's say hypothetically think of it like this let's have a section that would be circular isn't it and it's going to have a center let's say you are standing at the center and let me make a radial line if you walk on that radial line what will happen you'll realize that the magnitude of shear stress will keep on increasing right as you move outside and it is going to become maximum at the outermost point that is when you touch the radius of the shaft and this this can be calculated all these shear stresses can be calculated very easily using this formula tau is equal to t rho over j if you want the maximum shear stress tau is equal to t into radius of the shaft over j this is something which we have learned in the previous session and based on this philosophy we have solved whole lot of numericals also but all of a sudden why am i reiterating all of this stuff because it is our business to do that let me tell you why a similar kind of situation meaning this a similar kind of situation arises when this shaft is used to transmit power from one end to the other power from a motor to a pulley power from a motor to a gear or power rotates power from a turbine to a generator right and uh, let's say you are deputed in a power plant a power plant where let's say water is used as a working fluid basically it's a hydroelectric power plant okay so high velocity water is directed to the is allowed to fall on the blade of a turbine so obviously there is motion right and the, when the turbine rotates it being coupled to a shaft and that shaft being coupled to an electric generator electricity is produced and that is a different science all together what happens inside a generator there is change in magnetic flux per unit time ah oh, a lot of stuff 12th class physics is going to help you understand an electric generator in a much better fashion okay we, we are not interested in that stuff let's take the case of a power plant let's see let's rather investigate the kind of twisting that a shaft undergoes when it is coupled on the left with the turbine and on the right with a generator let's let's have all of these elements together so let's start off by this what is this guys this is a turbine right now a turbine could be used for different purposes let me tell you a turbine could be where you direct high velocity steam okay in case of thermal power plants a turbine could be where you use a uh, water high velocity water so that it strikes the blade and they start rotating and then it is coupled to the shaft right so there might be different kinds of turbines you can st you will study basically all of that in thermal engineering in also fluid machinery okay right now we are not interested in that so that's a turbine let me keep it aside for a while turbine basically is a mechanical device now let's have a machine element what is this so this looks like a shaft yes it is a shaft and we are going to couple it with the turbine one second just wait let me keep it aside what about this this happens to be an electric generator this is where electricity is generated okay right and a lot of physics is happening inside magnetic flux changes and all of that stuff not interested right let me keep that aside also so these are basically the three elements which 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 form the power plant let's say and then there is distribution of electric power also not interested let's assemble all of these devices and elements together something like this will happen okay so there is rotation in the shaft which we can clearly see in order to understand in order to understand how there is twisting happening inside or how there is twisting happening on the transmission shaft let's let's try to make free body diagram of all of them let's separate the shaft from the generator and from the turbine okay let's say inside the turbine the rotating the the rotation is clockwise right the blades happen to be rotating clockwise okay that clockwise rotation is transferred to the part of the shaft which is close to the turbine in the clockwise sense right and then for that is further transferred to the generator also that is also clockwise so these were basically the actions right action from the turbine to the shaft clockwise from the shaft to the generator clockwise now let us talk about the reactive torques or the reactions now to just take a look 
at the part of the shaft which is close to the generator at the generator it is clockwise so on the shaft it is going to be anti clockwise isn't it and then just take a look at this portion the portion of the shaft which is closer to the turbine on the shaft it is clockwise so on the turbine it is going to be anti clockwise so now if you take a closer look just take a look as at the shaft only what you see a clockwise torque at the front and an anti clockwise torque at the back this is the perfect example this is the perfect environment for twisting and whenever there is a twist there are shear stresses induced and we mechanical engineers come into the picture straight away as we are very much inclined towards knowing what the shear stresses are going to be right because whatever material this this shaft is made up of it obviously has a maximum amount of it has a maximum limit it has an allowable shear stress and the shear stress induced inside this shaft should not exceed the allowable value and this is basically the constraint based on which based on which the diameter of the shaft is decided right the diameter of the shaft is decided or designed let's say so you also happen to be a designer so that was the entire concept of all of this right twisting whenever there is a twist there are shear stresses induced okay now you got the point transmission of power something else which i need to tell you there is a strong connection between power and torque and to understand that connection we have to go in the flashback mode something that we've learned in rotational mechanics in rotational motion in rotational dynamics in class 11 physics okay let's let's talk in very elementary terms what is this so this looks like a box let's apply a constant force on the box and let's say the block displaces by a very small amount let's say a dx what is the work done by this force so it looks as if the work done is f dot dx now f and dx both of them happen to be vectors force and displacement these are vectors although when you have a product of that it is a dot product work done is a scalar basically okay now if i ask what is the work done per unit time what we'll do is you'll divide both of them both lhs as well as rhs with time so f dot dx divided by dt and you know very well what is dx by dt it is the instantaneous velocity and work done per unit time has been defined as power so power is nothing but a product of or a dot product let's say force and the instantaneous velocity so this is instantaneous power for you right so whenever an object which is moving straight which is moving in a straight line the power calculated is equal to force multiplied by velocity we know this now okay what will happen so if this is an object let's say if you apply a force on it constant force for some time you can calculate the power very easily that is work done per unit time what if what if i apply some torque to it let's say it's kept like this okay what if i apply some torque to it and it rotates initially this was the position and finally after applying the torque it has moved moved but rotated about this axis and made some angle let's say d theta in that case you can also calculate the work done by the torque now in mechanics we study about two things one where objects move along a straight line and two where objects rotate and that is rotational dynamics where mass moment of inertia has came into the picture we are not going to get into mass moment of inertia but just try to understand this in rotational mechanics just like you had force in linear mechanics you have you have got torque in rotation mechanics when you apply a force an object moves in a straight direction when you apply a torque the object rotates right force causes displacement torque causes rotation so the brother of force in rotational dynamics is torque the brother of displacement in in rotational the brother of displacement in rotational dynamics is is angular change d theta just like you had dx in the pre, in the example you are now going to have d theta once again work done by the torque is equal to work done just like work done by the force we've got work done by the torque is equal to t times of d theta so work done per unit time divide both of them by time work done per unit time is equal to what t dot d theta by dt and what is d theta by dt you already know what this is this is nothing but the angular velocity omega so power equals t omega and this is going to be an extremely important relationship which i am going to be using further one more thing omega equals 2 pi n remember this where n stands for number of revolutions per minute or per second 
okay let's say we are going to follow the si system and always we are going to put the value of n in rotations per second because power is nothing but work done per second that is watts newton meter per newton meter per second so joule per second that is watts <sighs> let's go get going with the numericals and here we go okay let's let's try to read all of them here we go a solid steel shaft ab so that's a steel shaft ab is to be used to transmit 3750 watt so there is some power which has to be transmitted through this shaft the power is 3750 from this motor obviously if the shaft rotates at 175 rpm so the rpm has been given rotations per minute has been given but remember all the values that we are going to plug in has to be in rotations per second so this has to be divided by 60 so that it gets converted into rotations per second and the steel has an allowable shear stress of 100 megapascals look the the material that we've used is a steel of the shaft basically right it has a maximum value the maximum shear stress value of that steel is 100 megapascal so make sure make sure that you design a shaft where the maximum value is not exceeded right that is one constraint again you need to work out the maximum not the maximum but the required diameter of the shaft to the nearest mm okay so to kick off we are going to write down all the known datas that's the power that's the rpm of the shaft this is the power to be transmitted and finally we have got the maximum allowable shear stress how to approach this problem okay you already know this master equation don't you t by j equal to g theta uh, tau by any radial distance tau maximum by the radius of the shaft right okay so let's let's keep this and this there you go t by j what is j in terms of diameter pi by 32 d raised to the power 4 something like this and what is r nothing but half of diameter okay let me write this something like this if you try to simplify this equation the expression that you will have will look something like this so torque t equals pi by 16 d cube times of maximum allowable shear stress and this formula is going to be very very helpful i want all of you guys to get it photocopied inside your mind right save it inside your memory this is going to be very very helpful uh, and we'll be solving more problems just watch what you need is the diameter and for calculating the diameter there are some inputs in the form of maximum shear stress which happens to be 100 megapascal so that's known to us what else do we need we need torque torque do we have torque no but we can calculate it from power so power is equal to t omega we know this just learned about it one omega happens to be 2 pi n so 2 pi n t n has been given as 175 revolutions per minute as i told it has to be in per second so 175 divided by 60 let me plug in all the values power happens to be 3750 and this is 2 pi this is n in rotations per second and this is the torque so torque will work out as 204.63 very easy very easy okay so you just need to plug in this value of torque into this equation over here and no problem all set pi by 16 d cube and this is 100 mega pascals done on solving you are going to get this value 0 0.0218 just multiply by 1000 to get it converted into millimeters that's it 21.8 and we also were supposed to find the diameter to the nearest mm so the nearest mm is approximately equal to 22 millimeters this is exactly how you can approach problems based on sh design of shafts right in case of power transmission through that shaft very easy isn't it but a very important topic let's move on you see uh, the shaft is pretty long this time around it's it's ac and it happens to have two portions one ab while the other bc and since it is long that's why it has been supported with the help of these bearings at d and e okay now the shaft also happens to have a diameter of 25 so this is not a problem of designing this is something else what we need to work out is the maximum shear stress in portion ab of the shaft and also in the portion bc of the shaft now the shaft is coupled to this electric motor producing 3 kilowatts 3 kilowatts of power okay so from here we have 3 kilowatts in this portion we have 3 kilowatts out of which 2 kilowatt has been taken out so how much remains only 1 kilowatt over here so that's 1 kilowatt 
in this portion ab of the shaft the power is 1 kilowatt and in this portion bc of the shaft the power is 3 kilowatts and based on this we will calculate the maximum shear stress but again in order to calculate the maximum shear stress what you need is torque you remember the formula t is equal to pi by 16 d cube times of tau so you need torque otherwise you cannot calculate it okay let's just write down all the given data and let me let me solve this question portion by portion let us take a look at this portion ab first of all so we've been given the power it is 1 kilowatt that is 1000 watts and number of rotations 50 revolutions per second so we've already been given this value in rotations per second so no need to divide by 60 all right so power has been given to us let us calculate the torque using this formula 2 pi nt so power is 1000 let us plug in the values and and you know very well it is already in rotations per second calculate the torque that's the torque second thing is to calculate the maximum value of shear stress so i've done this okay a subscript of ab this is going to help you torque 3.183 isn't it you just plug in the value diameter you know very well it is 25 millimeters so in meters it is going to be 0 0.025 just put in the value take a look solve for shear stress in this portion ab this is what you'll get long value okay shift six decimal places multiplied by 10 raised to 6 that is mega mega pascal so 1.04 mega pascals is ultimately what you get right that is the maximum shear stress on this portion ab of the shaft so if you have any cross section if you have any cross section something something like this between point a and b if you have any cross section here the shear stress is going to be zero but here it is going to be maximum and this maximum value has worked out as 1.04 MPA. These are values can also be calculated, right? By changing the radius from 0 to 25, to 25 millimeters. So using this formula, you know very well tau is equal to T, what? One sec, using this T by J is equal to tau by rho, where this is rho. Basically that's rho. Right? When you talk about this 25, this row becomes radius. Okay. Don't, you've seen all of this stuff. Let me erase it for now. Let us think about this portion, portion BC. This is what we are interested in. What is the power? 3 kilowatt. Let's move on to the new page. Portion BC. Just take a look. Portion BC is what we are interested in right now. Again, be it portion AB or BC, it's the same shaft. So number of rotations, it's going to be same. same. In one second, 50 rotations. Insane. Anyway, how do you approach now? Um, you are supposed to calculate the maximum shear stress. Tau BC is what you need to calculate. So you start off with this torque formula. Power is equal to 2 pi NT. So in this portion BC, we know it is 3000 watts. Just plug in the value. N happens to be 50 RPS. Plug in the value and the value of TBC is this much. Okay, so once torque is calculated, you can easily determine the shear stress using this formula. Right, just plug in the value 9.549, diameter is 0 0.025 meters. Plug it in and you shall get the value very easily. This is what you get, and that's 3.11 megapascals. Very easy. Right, this is this is also one variety where you are supposed to calculate the maximum shear stress in different portions of the shaft given a common diameter <sighs> that's done let's move towards the last problem and this is going to be very interesting watch okay um, let's let's understand the arrangement first of all by the way this there is a pulley over here and just just take a look at this portion there is a pulley over here right and this pulley happens to be mounted on this shaft and this shaft happens to be coupled with an electric motor behind right so that motor has been represented by this a motor a let's say you can also call the pulley as a they happen to be on a similar shaft the same shaft rather now the revolutions per minute over here of the shaft has been given so obviously this is a smaller pulley and it is connected to this larger pulley and then there is another shaft over here here at point b there is a another shaft we have a larger diameter pulley 
right and this diameter not diameter but the radius is 150 millimeters okay so what's the objective first of all let us try to understand what the objective is we have to find the diameter of the shaft here and also of the shaft here that is the da and db is what we need to calculate so to get the diameter again remember torque t can be written as pi by 16 times of d cube times of maximum allowable shear stress so you need torque you need maximum shear stress what you have is the maximum shear stress how much is that 85 mega megapascals now basically uh, the material of the shaft here on this smaller pulley as well as on this larger pulley right the material of shaft is same onto which these these uh, these rather pulleys have been mounted the material is same that is why we have been given only one shear stresses value maximum shear stresses value okay so that's known to us what we need to work out is the torque how can torque be calculated this is what we are interested in let's do that let's start for pulley at a pulley at a take a look power is going to stay same right power is going to stay same this is 300 watts allowable shear stress is 85 mega pascals and rotations you know 90 rpm okay so if you've got power you can calculate torque isn't it using this 2 pi a power keep it as 300 watts n this is in rotations per minute 90 so 90 by 60 and torque just plug in the values torque is 31.83 newton meter very easy now what once you've got the value of torque you can use this formula this over here to get the diameter and the diameter will work out as something like this this is torque and this is 85 mega pascals that is the maximum allowable shear stress and that's the diameter 0 0.0124 meter multiplied by 1000 corresponding value in millimeters that is 12.4 very easy until now <sighs> things are going to get a bit complicated now when you will try to calculate the diameter of shaft here onto which this pulley b is mounted how to approach that that is going to be very interesting just watch pulley at b okay let's start the analysis we don't know the number of rotations obviously one thing is for sure this being a smaller pulley it is going to have more number of rotation than this as it is a larger pulley obviously right but the one thing that is common in between the two is this belt and this belt has same linear velocity that is v equals omega r so omega r for this when you consider this um, pulley at a and omega r when you consider the pulley at b let's equate these two omega is nothing but 2 pi n isn't it omega is 2 pi n for this pulley at a the revolution is 90 90 per minute so this is in seconds multiplied by the radius you know very well this pulley happens to have a radius of 60 millimeters so 0 0.06 meters equals to again 2 pi nb so we knew na that was 90 but we don't know nb and this being a larger pulley nb is going to be smaller so obviously the value of nb is going to be lesser than 90 you'll see that divided by 60 okay let's let's make sure that this this side also uh, this side of the equation also uh, we can compute the value of nb in rotations per minute that is why i have divided by 60 multiplied by the radius is going to be 150 millimeters so 0.15 mm solve this equation and you are going to get nb as 36 rpm now things are going to become very easy for us we have got the value of nb if you have got the value of nb you've got the power you can calculate the torque why wait let's do that 300 what is this 36 rpm rpm so divide by 60 for rps that's it torque will work out as 79.5 use this torque into this equation and you will get the value of what was we supposed to calculate this diameter tau m happens to be 85 mega pascals that's it almost done almost done 79.58 yes that is the torque pi by 16 d cube d of the shaft on which this pulley b is mounted that is db okay 85 mega pascals and that's done 0 0.0168 multiply by 1000 corresponding value in millimeters so it's 16.8 millimeters that's done and dusted so that was all for today guys i'm going to see you again in the next video with 
some other topics on torsion in circular shafts. Until then, take care. Have a nice day. Keep learning. Keep watching. Thank you.